My name is Kaji Abdul Rao, uh, Social Economic Center, Ontario Institute for Studies in Education. So my I conducted a research on in microfinancing promoting in enterprise development. So um, this one, my my research experience I am going to share with you. The objectives of the study was uh, to study operational practices of Canadian and Bangladeshi microfinance institutions uh, in the area of gender empowerment, poverty elimination, and poverty organizing. And to compare and contrast Gamin Shakti credit systems, Bangladesh, with alternative credit program in Canada. To compare microfinance programs and the success rate of countries and to explore which uh, green microfinance uh, is adopted in both these countries. So I want to talk a little about what I mean by green micro credit. Green micro credit programs target micro business owners, engage in them in green business, green micro businesses, promotes mini cooperatives in the neighborhoods, assists them in becoming Economically self sufficient through self employment, help marginalized women entrepreneurs in their empowerment, promote community based local living in economic development. So, why green programs are important? Why I am good, much more concerned about green programs? Uh, the reason is you know, the recently, if we go on through from literature, newspaper, and uh, we find, we, we, we hear, I uh, read the corporations pollute uh, destruction and environment. Uh, the corporations are messed up the whole world uh, uh, they are because they are, their focus is only for profit maximization at the cost of environment, at the cost of society, at the cost of people. So these corporates, wastes, and petrochemicals uh, are, 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 are thrown into in the, in the, in the, in the places, in the, in the, in the society, in the land. So that actually that's the, uh, that goes to here, that goes to uh, the land, the water, uh, uh, and then the whole water can polluted. And the toxic products, they produce a lot of toxic products, and that is also uh -huh, um, channel uh, you know, in, in, the, in the river, into the lakes, in the ponds, uh, the canals, uh, that is. And the factory emissions are spread in the air and water. Indoor air pollution are increasing. Chemical fertilizers, hybrid seeds, and chemical agriculture and chemical agriculture destroy the soil fertility. Causes increasing of human illness and sufferings. Children are suffering from asthma and other diseases. Births and animals are dying. Corporations hold major burden responsibility for environmental pollution. So, micro credit. You know that we know the micro credit is well known to address the issue of poverty and uh, to address. Uh, uh, the inequalities to sustainable development, everything is said. But sustainable people center in micro lending program absent. Because if micro finance institutions are not controlled, they could involve in practicing unsafe and uneco friendly business financing. That can affect. Uh, unable that can be good effect and, uh, and and be unable to promote sustainable business development. If people are using fertilizer for their uh, for their uh, agriculture for their vegetable production crop production, and uh, that is too harmful to the, uh, to the environment. If they use massively use this chemical fertilizer. And pesticide to observe the um, so therefore I say that uh, this green microcurrent is essential. 
and the machine learning is very crucial for a lot of development to increasing you know, the poor standards of living and quality of life. So, to conduct this research, actually, I uh, visited and studied Gramin Shakti, Gramin Renewable Energy Program uh, in 2012, uh, 2008, and I also have an internship at Altana Seven Poverty Micro Loan Fund in Toronto and reviewed the microcredit literatures and also studied for other organizations like Bank City, um, Rise Me Up, and uh, I'm going to come, come to this much later on. So, and I not only just uh, just uh, go and just, uh, I also have participatory observations. I stay here, talk with the people, and I am from Bangladesh, and now I'm living in, in Toronto for 10 years. So, uh, my whole research is not for one day short information, one day short interview, for my, uh, my, my personal observation also, I find also included my uh, work in Spanish, uh, also included research. So, and I also use institutional ethnography to study these organizations. I told you that I already studied Alternative in Toronto, Community Room Fund, uh, Funds, Ottawa, uh, Riverdale Community Loan Funds, Toronto, Bank City Community Bank in Vancouver, Miki Weezy First Nations Community Development, Toronto. They are really doing very good job. They are very good uh, training program, networking program for the uh, First Nations people. Rising up Toronto, the new started and work with the uh, collaboration with CAMI, Canada Mental Health Hospital. Uh, they, started to give some loan to the mental health, uh, mental health so people to uh, do some business so that they can economically uh, sufficient. So alternative savings I find that uh, they have put elective loans at 122, accounted $567,000 and they are implementing 91%. Loans are for computer training courses. Uh, web page designing, computer repairing, and photography, child care, uh, ESL, learning center, printing, and glass cutting, restaurant, catering businesses, uh, trimming grasses, cleaning services, shoe repair, tailoring, and hair cutting. So, I, Gamin uh, Shokti, as of uh, 2010, Gamin Shokti is, is really a giant renewable energy market based action program in Bangladesh. They receive a lot of international awards. So they supply uh, affordable solar home system to people in credit, uh, provides training on improved cooking stoves, uh, solar home system and supply accessories. Gamin Bank Gamin Shokti has expanded its activity to 36,000 villages across Bangladesh. It's a big national program now. Builds Biogas plants in the villages and use cow, slurry, and organic fertilizer for uh, crop production for fish feeds. Gramin Shokti now has 5,200 employees, mostly they are engineers, uh, electrical engineers, civil engineers, mechanical engineers, uh, they do different types of uh, physics, uh, masters in physics, uh, those people. And total unit offices uh, uh, is uh, five. 510, divisional offices is uh, 12, uh, regional offices is 16, Gramming Technology Centers 20, uh, installed 130,000 production systems and 57,000 to 5,700 uh, stores in Bangladesh. They built 580 biogas plants throughout Bangladesh. 